You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Pretty Little Liars After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Pretty Little Liars After Show. Hello, everyone. Bing is for doing, and we are doing another Pretty Little Liars After Show. We are in Season 3, Episode 17, and this is Out of the Frying Pan and Into the Inferno. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> well, poor Spencer looked like she was girl was out of the frying pan. She was a hot mess. <laughs> Hi, I'm your host Kelly, and joining me as always are Whitney Lane. Hi, and Stephanie Winger. And uh, we got it was a very weird episode tonight. Yeah, we were kind of like, what's happening anymore? Same old, same old, but. You know, we had some new characters come back, which was good to see. Mm-hmm. We hadn't seen Cece in a while or Detective Wilden. Right. So, got some people coming back. Yeah, and in a little bit more of a creepier way. Like, we always knew there was something shady about the two of them, but it <laughs> seems like they may be more involved than we... Than expected. Yeah. I than agree on that one. I don't know, but... So, last episode, we got hit with a big bomb when Spen- well, Spencer did, when she found out that Toby was part of the A-team. And she's really having a hard time with it right now. I'm super surprised that she didn't run to her friends and tell them what happened. I mean, regardless of if she wants to hide that Toby's a part of the A-team just because she feels resentment and everything like that, like, you still need to open up to your friends. You need to tell someone so you can at least talk about the breakup, mm-hmm. whether or not you talk about him being on the A-team. You need that support, I think. But they all have secrets now from each other. It's no longer this foursome. I think we talk about it week after week that mm-hmm. they're all now keeping these secrets and this is a huge one to keep but... Well, because they're all affected by this one. It's not just an individual secret this time, you know? Yeah, it's true. I I kind of wanted her to like immediately run to them but she's clearly going to internalize it and we're going to see in the episodes to come that it's going to be this crazy turmoil for her and, mm-hmm. and even just like her face and everything. She did a great job portraying it tonight. Yeah, I mean, she, you know, she looked like she was really having a hard time. She was mad at everybody. She was, well, I think mostly she's mad at herself, and she's projecting onto everyone else. Right, because she's the one who's been kind of invested the most in this whole who's A, like, we got to protect ourselves. So when it kind of happened, she's kind of shocked. And so now she's like, maybe it is our fault. Maybe we should be hurt. Like, all these things that Mm -hmm. I'm like, Spencer, go back to being the Spencer we know where you protect your friends. You, you know, want to feel safe instead of making it like it's I don't know she was it's creepy a little bit like come on well I'm well my thought on it is I think she's being so hard on herself because I think she feels really stupid because you know she's the one that's you know the smartest out of everyone she's you know she's basically the genius out of the group she's the master investigator she's the one that's always like the private eye and there was a sleeping in her bed practically you know (laughs) and she didn't know it and I think that in itself on top of you know her feelings for Toby and their relationship and all of that I think that plays a big part too because you know she they just have the rug pulled from under her when she's supposed to be you know the, the know-it-all and she just got played I mean big time I mean they all did but more so you know yeah I would agree with that and I think I don't know it's just do you not think she had any inkling at all about this she's acting like she didn't Or was she in denial? Like, I wonder, because she is smart. She's intuitive. She knows Mm -hmm. what's happening around her. So that's why I'm like, did she really just not want to believe it? Did she have any, like, any part of her think that potentially Toby was just sketchy? Because he was hiding a lot of things. She Mm -hmm. had to know something was up. She had to question a little bit. The way she's acting, though, it's It's like... Right. And also, it was like her first real boyfriend. Wouldn't you call him out on it? If you knew, I feel like she's the kind of girl who would call her boyfriend out and be like, you're on this 
thing and you're tormenting my friends what's going on here and she did none of that and then you saw her crying last week so I just feel like she didn't even do that when she found out yeah. you know she didn't right. even really I mean, I mean she, she ran back like, but still so in shock but yeah. you know but remember too in you know earlier season maybe last season or the season before I can't remember exactly but didn't he get hurt by a you yeah. know, didn't he like fall off of something or break bones <laughs> yeah. or something? So I wonder if that's a, like an injury from him being part of the A team, if that makes sense. So instead mm -hmm. of it like allegedly was A hurting him, but maybe, maybe he hurt himself, himself trying to hurt them. I mean, it's an idea. Yeah, but. <laughs> I mean, now, I mean, that makes sense. It could have been. But at the time, you know, he played it off really well as he was in the line of fire as well to throw her off of you know maybe suspecting him because for a while they did suspect him didn't they right then yeah. they think him they were they, like what is he up to because he was always weird well he well, still, he still is, is let's be honest <laughs> i mean we, we'll get to the juvie <laughs> the juvie look here in a second <laughs> but you know talking about spencer i mean she would be you would think she'd be the type to call him out on it but she's also the smart one to where she can wait and wait and wait to figure it all and get all of her like facts straight mm -hmm. before she actually would admit to it i don't think i don't think that she knew i think she she's intuitive enough to have kind of thought something's up. Mm -hmm. I think she is devastated, but I think she's a bit in denial right now, and I think she really needs to be opening up to her friends or she's going to have, it's going to be a rough road ahead for her. Yeah, I think so too. And, pl and, you know, I don't know why it didn't dawn on her when she got that text from Aria that it wasn't really from Aria. That, and then, you know, Aria says that, you know, A got, you know, texted her so she right. knew she wasn't being set up. And, you know, she just blows up at her. She's not even processing these new these new things, these new incidents. I'm waiting for the confrontation between her. <laughs> I feel like we still need to have that confrontation between her and Toby. Oh, for sure. Oh, that was totally weak when she found out. Yeah. I was disappointed in that. Like, I get the shock and, you know, whatever. But this is somebody that she found out that's part of this group that's been seriously threatening your life almost every day and constantly tormenting you. Yeah, I mean, I just want her to get angry, <clears throat> and I feel like she's getting angry at everyone else, but the person that she really needs to get angry at, we right. haven't yet seen. She, yeah. She'll make it there. I, I have no doubt Spencer will come around at some point, but, I mean, if she, the way she took her anger out on Ezra, Lordy, if she has any of that in her, I'm sure she know. can take that out on Toby at some point. I mean, I hope so. I hope that she comes clean, and just, just for her own sake, because she is just really a mess right now. Gotta get closure from that mess. Yeah, I mean, she's storming out of school and talking about it's a waste of her time, and Miss Bookworm wants to, like, do nothing but study. Of all people. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. We'll see <clears throat> different layers of her, but I do think the old Spencer, I hope she comes back stronger than ever at some point. Yeah, I mean, I think that she has to. Mm -hmm. She's got to, you know, she needs to mourn the breakup. She needs to deal process what just happened. So, you know, we'll give her a break, and she's going to have to do that, but hopefully... Yeah. You know, it'll happen sooner rather than later that she kind of comes around a little bit at least. At least to her friends, I'm hoping. Yeah. Well, and also, you know, in the last episode, uh, Arya's dad, Byron, tells the girls that he saw Melissa outside right. Allie's house the night that she died. And remember, we were talking about when in the flashback how he gave her this like weird look yeah, and the kind saw of this, again smirk. this episode. Yeah. And they showed it again in the preview or like from yeah, last episode. Yeah. And. There's definitely something else with her. She hasn't come completely clean about her involvement in all of that stuff. Well, nobody has. No, we always say, I mean, if you're going to fake that you're pregnant, I think she's <laughs> hiding a few more things. <laughs> like, come on, girl. Yeah, so, and with Spencer being all whacked out, they can't really, you know, talk to her. She's not in her right mind, so she's not listening, so they can't really talk to her about Melissa at this point. So that's going to have to go That'll come around on the too, back burner yeah. for a minute. Well, what about Toby and Juvie? He was well. looking good. <laughs> I just With his do rag on it. his head. <laughs> I cannot handle it. Week after week, there's something that he does that I'm just like, oh no, here we go again. Well, I love that he never wears shirts. Like yeah. that's that that's his thing. How is he in Juvie and he's still like not wearing a shirt? I well, know, I mean he's, he's wearing it, it on, but it's but, you know, mm. it's all open and just so you can see I, his chest. Yeah, I mean, aren't there like <laughs> rules in Juvie? Isn't that like part of the deal that you have to like button your shirt I or you have to wear clothes and you can't have female visitors in your room yeah or a do rag like... on your head like <laughs> what was happening so um emily gets sent this box 
from Nate's family, yeah. the James yeah. family, which was very strange to me, and I don't quite understand that whole concept of con how that happened. How that happened. So it's some it's something is definitely not right there, at least in my eyes. But I don't know. So she gets this box full of cards that she sent to Allison, you know, all these little things, and then she finds this biology notebook, and as she's showing it to Hannah and Arya, they find this, like, written conversation. It's like text messages back in the day before you could text. It's that like, was weird. Did you ever used to write notes with your friends in one yeah. notebook? Yeah, we would just pass it around. Right. Yeah. Totally. So she's got this notebook that just has this, a conversation that Allie's having with someone else that they don't recognize the handwriting, but they're talking about Toby and how Allison went to go visit Toby and Juvie, hence the flashback to him being and all gangsta. Yes. <laughs> Looking good, Toby. But we also find out that Allie was getting those notes from A. So this was happening to her. Right. So, you know, whether it's a twin or she's still alive or whatever the speculation is, you know, I don't really think she's the one behind all this, especially if it was happening to her. Right. And she walked in there like, I know you're the one doing this. Mm -hmm. It's not Jenna, is what she was saying, because Jenna had been in surgery or something when all these, some mm -hmm. of these notes were delivered. But, yeah, and Toby just completely, he says, he, his one quote where it's just like, I'd love to find out who this person mm -hmm. is. I'd team up with them kind of thing. But I wonder if Toby knew about these at all. Do you think? Well, I mean, and or maybe he, when he found out from Allison, he started to research right. it, and then he did exactly what he said, and he did team up with them. That's exactly mm -hmm. what I was going to say, because he kind of mentions this thing of, like, well, if I knew who was, I would join, and mm -hmm. now you're, it's kind of come full circle exactly well and allison seemed to be under the impression that this all started because of the fire in the garage yeah. right that's kind of what yeah. she that, right. that's what she said so they're thinking it started with um toby and jenna but if you know if not i mean and then I mean, we find out a whole uh, you know a couple of things about ally true you know i was surprised well going through that biology notebook Emily finds a picture of Allie and Cece from the boat. Was it the boathouse or yes. the or lake something? I'm sure it was somewhere in wherever yes. she went, Hilton Head or somewhere where she went to yes. visit her grandmother in the summers and stuff. Yeah. So she finds this picture of the two of them, shows it to Cece, and Cece start. You know, they're trying to find out because in the notebook she keeps referencing this beach hottie. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, that's all she calls him is the beach hottie, and they're trying to find out who that is. And Cece claims that she doesn't know who the beach hottie is, mm -hmm. which I actually don't believe for mm -hmm. a second. There's yeah. no she knows way. way more than she lets on. Because if you're writing about someone, like, I don't know, back in, like, when you were younger, but everyone knew who the person was. It's all, there's, like, keys, but... Like, even well, if you she, give everybody a nickname, but yeah, you know, at one point, yeah. especially if they're all hanging out together, you would see the person or meet the person. Right. Yeah. Which she didn't say that she didn't meet them. She said she probably did, but there were just so many. She so many hotties met. those two she weeks. Didn't know. <laughs> those crazy two weeks, <laughs> which seemed to be crazy because Cece's out there partying, like, go get Jason, tell him to get away from his weed and come out and hang out <laughs> with us. Next thing you see is Allie in the background, all disheveled, her mascara smearing, mm -hmm. and she's like, I'm late. She tells LCC two weeks late, mm -hmm. which insinuates that or implies that she could be pregnant. And she's terrified. How old is she at this point? Oh, 15? What, 15? Yeah. 14? Was, yeah. It's ridiculous. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> they're drinking, they're getting pregnant. <laughs> Stop. And they're not even 16. I know. And once again, we are watching ABC Family. Uh, I know. <laughs> Crazy. Yay to the underage sex. No. <laughs> no. They need to settle on down. Set, calm down. Yeah. But she did say, you know, if he, I can't tell him if he finds out, he'll kill me. So that mm -hmm. opens just a whole other can of worms because it's like, right. well, who was it that might have gotten her pregnant that could be a suspect in her Well, murder? and the way that she said it, you know how you'll say that sometimes, oh, my gosh, my mother's going to kill me. And you, or you say it right. like as an expression. But the way that she said it was she was honestly terrified, it seemed, that she was really scared that literally he was going to kill right. her. S say, say the line for me. What she said. Oh, she said he's going to kill me. <laughs> Oh, yes. That's exactly how she yes, felt. Yes, she had like the, the face, like the, you know, big yeah. eyes and all and, and all of that. Honestly, Cece does not care. Like that girl's just like, let me have fun. She's like, oh. You know, it's not like, it's not like she's, she's like, oh no, what are we going to do? She's like, oh. Okay. She's like, it's not my problem. Right. I'm she sorry doesn't care. For you. She's trying to go party at that little, whatever it said that was so funny. It was like, 
I don't know, good le great legs inside. It was like a crab house, yeah. like crab legs. I was like, okay, that's <laughs> cute. But the big reveal was kind of the whole, because Emily takes the stuff to the police. Right, after after all of that, and they realize that she could have been pregnant, you know, all of these things. So, okay, it's time for the police to get involved because if she was pregnant, and now, you know, there is a possible Sus suspect. Right. So she takes it to the police, and of course. Where her mother's working now. Yes. And of course, the detective Wilden is there, mm -hmm. who, Has you know, always been sketchy and always. too involved. And and when he's talking to Spencer's mom before Spencer Emily's gets there, let me, I mean to Emily's yeah. mom. I'm sorry, let me backtrack a little. <laughs> She's, you know, the, we cut to the police station, and there's this awkward kind of scene, which oh. is and the introduction <laughs> of new characters was like totally awkward. I think tonight, well, but past the family, <laughs> yeah. yeah. When she, as she drops the napkin, it was just totally. <laughs> random and weird. It was. Anyway, and then that's when we see Detective Wilden kind of jump in the conversation and it kind of gets passed along to him because Emily's mom is really concerned about this package that Emily received and right. wanting to know if the police should intercept it, you know, whatever. So then, you know, cuts to like a few hours later, you know, Detective Wilden is checking, you know, checking on Emily's mom, you know, how is Emily, what's going right. on, and then he proceeds to tell her, which at first it seemed like Emily's mom was, like, really annoyed by him. She did, and I think she should be skeptical, because I think yeah. they always have been, but I didn't know she was so, yeah, she, she, was, she was as perceptive as, like, Hannah. I mom. think so, too, because she was really kind of, didn't want to talk to him at first, yeah. until he said that he understood what Emily was going through and he went through a similar thing and she's like wait I don't follow so he basically tells we the story <laughs> we did not follow we're like Kelly what did they say yeah. so he basically tells a story about how like you know shortly after he got out of the police academy that he had to defend himself and he killed someone hmm now you know, he talks about how, it, even though in the eyes of the law he did the right thing, it's still not, not an easy thing to watch someone die, so he can understand why Emily, you know, may be having issues and going, you know, it's just, it's a really tough thing, and he didn't really ever talk about it, and, you know, and then she says, well, when did you decide to talk about it? And he said, well, right now. Yeah, That's he's, what mm -mm. was really weird to me. <laughs> like, I was just like, wait, so you randomly decided in the middle of work that this is the moment to reveal your deep, dark secret? Like, well... Okay, I was thinking that it was so non-believable at first, right. but then, you know, when you stop and think about it, sometimes it just takes something that you relate to to make you want to talk about right. something. And this, the, the situation is not always the best. It's not always a pro... You know what I mean? Sometimes sure. it's, you just blurt stuff out if, you, if something is relatable to you, I think. But maybe talk to Emily and not her mom. You know? Yeah, but I mean, I think he was he trying was to trying comfort to her in a it. sense that I, she's not talking to you. Don't be so hard on her. I yeah. didn't either. And then all of a sudden, I just don't you know. trust the dude. Well, I'm no, lying. I don't trust him either, I especially mean, when Emily finds that picture. Oh, well, yes. <laughs> yes. Nice. Beach Hottie could have been revealed, people. Yes. What do you guys think? Do you think the Beach Hottie was sketchy, sketchy, creepy Detective Wilden? How old would he, he have been? Good, like 24? I must say he looked good. <laughs> no, he really His did. friends were cute, too. Uh, I know. No, I, I totally think he's hot. Uh -huh. But that's besides the point. He's creepy. But at that point, what would he have been? Like 20 and she was 14? Nasty. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, guys, go to iTunes. <laughs> subscribe to our podcast. Rate and comment and let us know if you think that he, the beach hottie could have been him. I don't know. That's too easy, though. Well, and then that just draws the whole, is he the one that killed her? Is he the one that got her pregnant? Mm -hmm. And then he talks about how he killed someone, but it was, okay, it was like, in self-defense or whatever. Well, that way he talks about it, that they went through the whole, you know, investigative process with the law and everything, so I, I doubt yeah, it was well, her. Yeah, well, right. You can't put that together. But, but like, yeah. you know. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know. It's he's definitely not gone about this whole investigation in a proper manner. So maybe it could just be his arrogance that makes him creepy, or maybe he just really is creepy. Well, I think he's invested in in this case to a degree because if he was there the same time these other people were mm -hmm. there, he knows more than he lets so on. Do you think it was? It, it's more of a personal thing I to him. I think he's invested and that's why. somehow. Well, he also just clearly has another motive. Like if right. you go to the police, it should be just straight up that they're looking at facts and whatever mm -hmm. and he seems to be emotionally invested even by revealing that story tonight. or getting mm -hmm. with Hannah's mom or every way that he can get as close as he can mm -hmm. these girls don't trust him but he's finding a way kind of to still keep that case on his in his profile you mm -hmm. know interesting I don't know I think yeah there's something there I don't know we'll see yeah I guess we will see so all of that 
is going on and Paige and Caleb are on a mission and Hannah over here. Hannah's just like literally, she's just standing like two feet, two feet away, literally just like staring while they're talking and somehow Paige never sees her. She like, never turns around. She's standing right there. Everyone else can see her <laughs> listening to your conversation and Paige has no clue. She never turns around. She just bolts. Yeah. You know, well. Yeah, you know, maybe she couldn't feel the staring. Well, we find out that Caleb's <laughs> the one that put the brain and the knife mm -hmm. in Mona's locker. But we knew they were on a mission, you know. But for some reason, they had to meet up that night at 7 o'clock. Right. So Hannah proceeds to follow Paige <laughs> to a lesbian bar. So I like that Aria calls her, what are you doing right now? Following Paige. Yeah. <laughs> She's just like, whatever at this point. I mean, it can't be too shocking. If that's like, seems to be her new side occupation is yeah. stalking Paige. And so, yeah. It's Gia. She shows up to ladies night <laughs> at this lesbian bar. But it was the worst kind of following I've ever seen. And the fact that they didn't see her. How? Especially she gets a drink spilled on her. She's ducking underneath tables. No, but she's like, literally standing right. like right. Like I'm further away from you yeah. than she was from them. I know. I know. <laughs> Somehow she got away with it. So if you see someone like go down at a club, like it, it just it seems like that would grab attention. It to would. Yeah. yeah. Everything she did should have grabbed attention, <laughs> but it did not. Yes, but no. But Paige is there talking with some other girl. It looked like she was on a date. Right. It really did look like she was on a date. And maybe that's her way to kind of release every the tension that she's feeling and go out there. But I thought she was like super scared to leave the house. What happened now? She all of a sudden she's at a bar. Well, with some. And other how girl. is she at a bar? Isn't she 16? My gosh, that's right. Like, how are they all doing this? Well, what she, is happening? She got in trouble for being underage drinking. Well, well Hannah, Hannah did. did. Paige is still oh, there. Oh, true. How did Paige even get in? Well, how did Hannah get in for that matter? Yeah, but she yeah. had to have had a fake ID. Paige, Ma well, I'm, well, well Paige I mean, looks Hannah, like she's Hannah? about 20, so she could pass. My yeah. goodness, I just need to relax. <laughs> These girls need to focus on, like... Well, when Spencer's, like, tripping out, doesn't she have, like, a drink on the stairs? Is she, like, drinking like her it. sorrows away? This is not good, Amy. No, <laughs> no, that's not, not the way to handle your, your problems, people. Do not, do get, not turn yes, to alcohol. Do not. <laughs> or if you do, do it in moderation. <laughs> there you go. Just not when you're 17. I was like, be 21. <laughs> <laughs> Killing me. No, but it is. It's really they're at these bars. They're drinking. They're you know. I'm just yeah. It's funny. I know. Because you know. forget that they're teenagers in high school. That's the thing about it. Is like right. they're dealing with a lot of real kind of more grown up issues than most teenagers have to deal with, and then intensify that because it's you know it's a teen drama. Right. Yeah. But you know the way that they're handling their stress is. It doesn't it's seem it's appropriate. It's <laughs> interesting. Right. No. But Hannah gets in trouble. She gets that drink mm -hmm. spilled on her and gets caught with a drink, so she mm -hmm. has to go to the cops. Her mom, I mean, it didn't seem like anything really happened to her. No. I thought it was funny that when the bouncer asked for her ID, she didn't even try to, she's, she's just, like, just like, whatever, I'm in trouble. That's just her, like, yeah. whole life, her MO. She's like, whatever. Yeah, she just deals with it as it comes. She never tries to get out of anything. I like it. I like it, too. But maybe she knows her mom's just going to be like, Hannah, here we go again. <laughs> You know, yeah. Her and her mom have some tension too. I mean, it kind of was happening the whole episode, mm -hmm. but it's true. I mean, I think Ashley does not want Hannah to be hiding so much from her. It seems to help when they talk and kind mm -hmm. of confide in each other. But Hannah also doesn't want to share everything she's she's right. feeling or thinking about Paige and Caleb and A and Mona. And all the drama that's going on in well, our life. Well, because I think that, you know, when you tell your parents, it just kind of intensifies it because then they want to get involved. Of course, mm -hmm. they don't want you in a dangerous situation. They don't want anyone hurting you. But sometimes they make it worse because, right. you know, when they start to meddle, it just intensifies it all and it just, you yeah. know, gets crazy. I, but, you know, and speaking of parents, like when we get back to um, Byron and Aria, yeah. How is Arya's mom not checking on her at all? I don't How get do we it. not see that? I mean, this crazy woman almost killed her, and yeah, nobody still, cares. They don't. Besides, oh, good, Meredith is getting help from her doctor, or her dad says she's getting help. She must not have been taking the pills. Obviously, that's what she was putting <laughs> in Arya's tea. Like. <laughs> I don't understand, people. But she wants, but he wants her to get treated, not punished. Right, Aria? Is that yeah. what you want? And it's like, she wants her in Alaska. She doesn't want her here. I'm like, sorry. I'd be like, put her in a straight jacket and get her out of the, you know. Should have never been in their lives no. in the first place. Thank you, Byron. Thanks, Dad. Like, thank you. That's what makes me think that there's something like, there that is. he's definitely still involved in a different way, especially because he does the whole dad speech. Yeah. 
you know, it's my job to protect you, and I just really haven't been doing a good job. At all. Wang, 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 at know? all, Byron. No. Yeah. Zero. No. Yeah, I don't get why Arya's not hanging out with her mom more, staying with her mom. I, that, I don't understand it. But I guess her brother's staying with her mom. I, I was well, about then, to say, what yeah. happened to the brother? Yeah, that, yeah. Haven't last seen. episode, I think she said that he was, her brother was over with her mom, so she yeah. wasn't going to go over there when she was sick. But well, doesn't, and doesn't the mom have the boyfriend still? See, we don't know. We need to yeah. hear more about. Maybe she's just kind of living a life finally, and Arya's trying to give her some room, maybe. Yeah, but like she's still her mom. Like, come on, Ella. Well, it's Ella's job to right. call. You know what I mean? Arya shouldn't have to be chasing her. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. Arya but. instead has to start chasing someone else because yes. otherwise that relationship looks about. I down know. The drain. Well, you know, let's talk about that. And who's the one to spill the beans? Spencer, she has got she's gotten stupid over this whole Toby thing because mm -hmm. she gets texts and just assumes they're correct. Yeah. She's never been that. Well, she's just acting emotionally. Right. Just, yeah. Anything that happens, she's reacting. She's not thinking about well, it. Well, she mm -hmm. said what she needed to say to Toby to Ezra. And which basically, was, she let her anger out that way. Yeah. That was one of the craziest scenes, I think, in Pretty Little Liars, at least in a while. To me, it was just like she lost it on mm -hmm. Ezra. And, and he and, had no clue what was... He's like, what? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and we haven't seen him for a bit, so he was just like, I don't know why he was in the park. It was all very set up Riding in the park. In the mm -hmm. park. Yeah. <laughs> Someone saw him in the park. Well, the thing that I found weird is the text message says, you know, for her to come and meet Arya in the park. So why does she automatically storm up to Ezra? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I if she had been thing. in her right mind, she would have stopped. Where's Arya? What happened? But not stormed to Call him. Oh, Arya found out what happened before yeah. she goes and just vents <clears> to... But she just took it all out on right. him, poor guy. And yeah. he just got this brick, you know, dropped on his head that he has a seven-year-old child he never knew about. And understandably, he's hurt. <clears throat> he feels like Arya should have opened up. He said, you're the one in my life. You're, I'm, you're the one I'm spending my life with. You should have told me. Mm -hmm. And he kind of just, he comes to school and then, which I think is funny, because it's yeah. like, back to your home for <laughs> there, as for Fitz. <clears throat> oh, and what was the hashtag? Fitz finds out. Yeah. I was like, that's cute. <laughs> All episode, there were the most amazing hashtags. Yeah. There were a couple Cal more. I Allison down. confesses. That yeah. was, <laughs> I know, I was like, oh, no. But he runs to school and he's just like, why would you do that? And just kind of storms off. Well, how do you guys feel about that? Do you think that she should have told him or should she have, you know, taken Maggie's side on this? the way that she did How, what what kind of relationship <clears throat> does she have with maggie she holds no you know exactly. there's no reason to to stand up for her you need to be with you need to be honest with the person that is in your life and do you think that she was not telling him because of maggie or because of her own i think thing? a lot of it i mean it, it could it has many reasons you know she didn't want him to like run off to be mm -hmm. with his son or well, be see, with that's maggie what i think or... was her main reason i really don't think she cared about what maggie wanted i think she used that as an excuse oh, for sure for when he did find out she could throw it back on that but I don't think she cared about that I think she was more worried about him leaving her yeah, which I, is now what's happening yeah. right she was terrified <clears throat> that he was he was gonna leave her and like mm -hmm. lose him I mean that's what she's always been afraid of whenever it comes to that she doesn't want to mm -hmm. lose him and tonight we kind of saw that he checked out of that relationship yeah uh, in a major but way I don't think he wanted to like after he when he was crying at the car after he had packed up I thought he was crying because he's like I think this relationship has to end. I don't think he wants it to end with Arya, but, like, what are you going to do when you have a son and he's in a different area? You know what I mean? I don't know. That's yeah. how I felt. I felt he was kind of like, this is going <clears> to <throat> have to happen, even though I may not want it to be this way, but who would have thought I've ha I have a seven-year-old child that's just really going to come in and change my whole world? Right. See, and I thought the tears were more that he was just overwhelmed. Like, he was yeah, doing what really? he had to do to get to his well, son. Well, see, that's what I thought, too, that he just didn't even want it. I mean, he was packing up and leaving and he was supposed to meet her you know what I mean like he wasn't even he was getting yeah. it together she didn't even know he was leaving he doesn't even have a, a time frame of when he's going to be gone he she asked if she can call him he doesn't even answer I know that's he the just, thing I think I could <clears throat> see both sides but I could I could see like defeat in his eyes in a way kind of mm -hmm. like you know why didn't you tell me this is what's going to have to happen and really like I'm having to leave a lot a lot behind I'm going to have to change a lot that's just how I felt because yeah. I feel like that's how it's going to end up the relationship, it doesn't seem like it's it's obviously on the rocks. Mm -hmm. And you know that they were both invested in it. He's going to be disappointed. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what those tears meant. I don't know. I think he was definitely overwhelmed with everything. And I think he really just, you know, when she asked that, I don't think he thought about it. Yeah. And I think if, like, all hit him and he was just like, you know, in his mind, he's gone. 
Yeah. Like, he's going to deal with it. She's is kind of insignificant right now because yeah. he's got bigger things to deal with. It's true. You know, he's got bigger fish to fry. And that stinks. <laughs> it's sad. No, it is. I mean, he's... I don't know. It, it, they've been together for a really long time. They've been through a lot of stuff, and for her to keep something like that from him. Well, it's immature, and that just shows her age right. a little bit, too. And, but especially after they had talked about it and, you know, when she met his mother and that whole situation and why he left his, you know, family. Right. And just because of the kind of the severity of the whole situation, aside from the kid, just everything surrounding that, the fact that she still kept it yeah. from him. You know, is oh, is pretty man. crappy. Oh man, I know. She didn't even seem too like upset, honestly. Like compared to Spencer, she was just like, <clears throat> I think she just is like, well, we get through everything. We're gonna be okay. But this time, it may not be that way. Well, I think you know she's a kid and she doesn't realize the magnitude of what the situation of means. Any situation, no. like hello, you almost got you were drugged by your, you know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> like there's so many things where it's just like Aria, like get yourself together. Come on, girl. I know. <laughs> None of them do. No. I mean, they're walking into, you know, basements by themselves, you know. Mannequins. It's leaving doors unlocked, which is my personal one. I can't understand. Yeah. If you Running through the forest, sitting in dark rooms. Mm. I they're mean, kind of all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but definitely a lot of revelations tonight, and it's. I think it's kind of like a turning point for the season to see, you know, where these different relationships are going to go, and, you know, Spencer's flipping out, and she's going to the dark side a little bit, and I just want to say that I had yeah. said a while ago that I thought she might, I know, you know, I be, a little, be a little shady, and she may flip a switch, and this may be the point of it that. It could be. It very well could be. You know. I think that was smarter than me being like, she's on the A-team. So, <laughs> yeah, so no. good one. Good call yeah. there. <laughs> no, I think it's just going to be, she may get a little bit more aggressive and just go a little bit darker and not tell her friends. And in that sense, kind of flip on them, but in a different way. I yeah. don't think she would necessarily. Because, I mean, we saw from the previews for next, you know, next week, she's going to she kind of kind of get into it a little bit with with Mona. Right. And so we'll we're going to see what that goes. about this private detective as well. <clears throat> yeah. She meets with a private detective to so follow it seems, Toby. So it seems. Yeah. I don't think she really said, but mm -hmm. that's they kind of alluded to that's what he does. and um, Which we all expected. I mean, when she was texting to meet someone, we were like, Toby, she's really going to go meet Toby. And yeah. it's just like, you know, don't tell anyone. I won't. And mm -hmm. it's this guy. I so. wonder if it's the same person that her parents hired to follow um you remember when they were supposed to be giving somebody money or something? Yep. Jason. That whole yeah, that they whole situation. They gave Jason, but they were following a lot of people. I but like. didn't they have somebody following Melissa when they thought yes. she was yes. messed up yeah. or mm -hmm. something like that? So mm -hmm. I wonder if it's that same family friend or something like Could that. Be. But I guess we'll find out and kind of see where that goes. Yep. I don't know. Crazy. <gasps> Sounds good. From the previews, it looks like we have some more action coming up. So, so we'll see. Crazy. You ready for some news and gossip? Yep. After Buzz TV yeah. News. So we have some casting news for you Noel Khan fans. Mm. Um, Good looking. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can check out Army Wives. Yeah. Brand Doherty, who plays uh, Noel, will be appearing on that show. He's going to be playing the second uh, Lieutenant Patrick Clark. And this is some big casting news for him, and he's joining a cast that in the upcoming season will also have Brooke Shields um, oh, in it. So nice. it's kind of getting, oh, and Jesse McCartney as well. So okay. they have a nice Growing. little group going on yeah. on that show, and that's always a fun one to watch. So definitely check that out. And then um, Keegan Allen, uh, who plays... Uh, Toby. 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 I just totally <clears throat> wanted to say that. Um, <laughs> and he did an interview with um, AfterElton.com uh, at the TCA Winter Press Tour. Mm -hmm. And he talked about that he kind of sees his character as being really tortured. Mm -hmm. And we kind of saw a hint of that tonight, not just with Allison, though, but by the girls as a team. Mm -hmm. And so they were really, really awful to him. And he's quoted saying, in high school, that's a tough place to be already. But to be an outcast and an outsider and have an abusive stepsister, then to be accused of blinding her and having to go to um, juvenile juvie hall, <laughs> you keep with that. So, like, he really sees himself, he's kind of justifying what his character's doing, I feel like, in that quote. Yeah, that he's kind of the victim of all of this that they did to him, so he's getting revenge, basically. Yeah, but Absolutely. we still don't like it. I guarantee the fans <laughs> don't either. No, I <laughs> mean, Toby. He, no, I know, exactly. We want him to, you know, yeah. be the good guy, and he's clearly going darker and darker. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then we have a little news on Lucy Hale, of course, who has a big recording contract. Um, she's signed and she's been recording in Nashville. We've talked about it um, mm -hmm. in the last few shows. And she claims that this is something that she wanted to do before Pretty Little Liars. She grew up singing and acting sort of came along the way, but recording is what she does a lot of weekends and she has long nights of it and she's just super passionate about it. So that makes me so excited for the mm -hmm. record. When oh, I, I can't wait. I love me some country music, so. Yeah, I mean, when someone's so passionate about it and mm -hmm. that's what they really want to be doing, I always feel like those are the best projects. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not just kind of riding the same wave and just seeing what well, you know what all you can do. Exactly. It's like it's something she really wants to do. So that, that's that's. And nice she's been working, I think, with Sugarland, and I, yeah. I expect it to be a great record. I'll be awesome. excited for that. Yeah. All right, well, let's get into some predictions. Oh, goodness. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you think? Allie's alive, and the officer... <laughs> The officers didn't kill her. No, I'm just kidding. Right. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm having a hard time. I don't have, like, a specific... I mean, obviously, you can say, like, these people are more involved, and, mm -hmm. you know, you're, they're sketchy. I honestly don't know. Yeah. What's going to happen? Well, we find out from the preview, we saw something very interesting, that um, Emily goes to see kind of a hypnotist, so she can kind yeah, of unleash... Sees the um, the shrink yes the lady the one that I'm telling you she's this coming back. yes the, okay here's my prediction okay so she goes to see the shrink lady that uh, somebody told me her name on a comment and I'm sorry you guys <laughs> I can never remember it but because I always think of her from this movie Shag that she was in like <laughs> years ago so that's what I picture her as anyway. She goes back to see the shrink. She gets hypnotized, and then all of a sudden, she has this memory of her doing something to Allie with a shovel. With that, was with it the shovel? The shovel from yes. Or was it the hockey stick? Well, it looked like a shovel at her foot, and okay. she was doing something. But I mean, we'll find out next week on exactly what that is. But okay, I think this chick is sketchy. The psychiatrists always have. Yeah. Ever since the car crash from last mm -hmm. season, I've always thought that. I think she may be implanting these ideas mm -hmm. into her head nice. just to kind of keep it going and just to confuse them a whole lot more. Oh. Because I still think she's kind of the one behind it all. Yeah, and you know what's interesting is how does she come back in the first place? Because if we remember, she was like, I can't return. Like, you know, she found out who A was. Mm -hmm. She knew stuff. So wonder how, who's letting her back in. I don't know. Well, and the fact that she was at the car crash scene in the first place a long time ago has always kind of piqued, you know, my whole yeah. conspiracy theory here. Nice. I don't know. What about you? I just, I feel like you're kind of on that same page I am, and I want to <laughs> see where... Um, <clears throat> Spencer, who's having all these problems, I mm -hmm. feel like we're only on the like cusp of how dark it's going to get for her. Like mm -hmm. it's going to go deeper and deeper, and I think it's going to not only mess with her, but she seems to be pulling down her friends, like she did tonight with um, Aria and Ezra. Mm -hmm. And it will be interesting to see if she kind of starts destroying other people's relationships because I think she can't trust anyone anymore, and so mm -hmm. that's part of why it, yeah. why this is happening. I can yeah, see I think it. she's going to get a little bit too self-destructive and, you know, kind of destruct all the things around her, but hopefully it won't last and they can kind of help pull her out. Right. The girls will yeah. come together, so we'll see. Ezra and his kid, that's going to blow up in his <coughs> family's face, I think. Oh, so absolutely. We'll see some yeah, more I mean, Wes and Do you and think he's totally going to get back together with her and try to raise the kids? <sighs> I don't, see that, I don't want that to be my prediction. That's why I can't <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But thank you guys so much for hanging out. As always, please go to iTunes, rate, and comment. And you can find us on Twitter at AfterBuzzTV. And you can find me at Kelly with an IE 079. I'm at Whitney Lane 1118. And I'm at Stephanie Wenger. Thanks again, and we'll see you guys next week. Yay! From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.